Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Uh, today we have one of our favorite guests, John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. And of course, my partner, John Coleman. Of course, of course. Hey, John, good to see you. Good morning. <laughs> you look ready to talk. Oh, boy, I got to get him. Remember Steve Allen used to put the hat on and said, Wah! just wait till I tell you what the news is today. I can't, yeah. I'm so angry. A man in the street. Oh, turn that off. Yeah. I didn't say lecture, I said talk. <laughs> so as a, uh, as a restaurant critic, uh, do you consider yourself a, a restaurant writer or a restaurant critic? Well, somewhere in between, meaning that I, I wear both hats as well as travel writing and wine writing and so forth. But to me, a critic or a reviewer is a guy at a weekly newspaper or maybe a magazine where he goes to a restaurant a couple of times and reviews everything from top to bottom. Um, it used to be anonymously. Now nobody cares anymore about that. And... Uh, and talks about uh, each individual thing from their locality. Um, since I get to travel the world, when I get back to traveling the world, um, I don't have the leisure to go back to a restaurant two or three times, obviously. So I'm giving you a postcard version based on as many things as I can sample. But as you know, and as, as you have often mentioned, John, um, I like to put things into context. So if you're reading uh, a review by a critic of the L.A. Times, uh, he or she doesn't have to fill you in on all that many aspects of where they are or what this neighborhood is like. Or, um, but I kind of do if I happen to be in Warsaw or Prague or uh, an arrondissement in, in Paris. And I try to put things into perspective, the kind of food. So, yeah, I'm more of a writer and encyclopedist and so forth and traveler, as well as doing the um, brass tacks of uh, reviewing. You know, I, I, I guess the question came to my mind was, uh, with this COVID stuff and so many restaurants closing, and now, thank God, some restaurants opening, um, the reviewer's role of, the critic's role, I should say, really, not the reviewer's role, but the critic's role is not, doesn't seem to be uh, as necessary as a reviewer. I mean, I'm kind of making a fine line there, but do we still need people to tell us this food is good or this food is bad and don't go here and don't go there? Um, more than ever, um, which is to say that people really do, first of all, people are dying to go out to eat. I mean, I don't, I don't know a single restaurant around here where I live in a little town, a little village of Tuckahoe, that isn't packed most nights of the week. Um, a brand new restaurant opened last Thursday on the Upper West Side. I got there at 7 o'clock, completely full inside and outside. So people are dying to go out. They want to try what's new and they want to read about what's old and uh, their favorite place is still around. So you need somebody to at least report on that. Um, but the review is... Um, uh, uh, the way that we review now, and I think I speak for pretty much everybody who has, who has uh, spoken about this, is, is a bit different for various reasons. First of all, those restaurants that used to give out stars or in New Orleans they give out little red navy beans and, and uh, so forth, the ones that give out stars have stopped for the time being. And um, because they realize, the reviewers, that not one of these restaurants <clears throat> can possibly be in peak top form during COVID, um, not least because uh, of staffing, uh, because of getting back up and running, getting all the grease traps uh, cleaned out and so forth. Rest restaurants are struggling both to survive and to thrive. So... We've taken away the stars, <clears throat> which people never understood anyway. Um, if you have, let's have a four-star system, which the New York Times has, one meant good, two meant very good, three meant excellent, and four meant outstanding. So when I used to give out stars when I was reviewing on a weekly basis, um, people would say, whoa, one star, and that place is pretty lousy. I said, no, one star means good. Good, solid restaurant. 
So I always hated the stars. I, I, I thought people look at the stars, glance at the stars, and they don't even read what I wrote about the Manicotti. Um, so now you got to read <laughs> what we write in order to see if we like a place and what we like about it. Um, we are all being much more forgiving in the sense that uh, the other night I went to a restaurant in Manhattan, <clears throat> which it was a simple Italian trattoria with great food, terrific wine list, good waiters, but the, the, the service was a mess. And we were there for three hours for a three course meal. Um, and they have to tamp down the noise and they have to turn up the lighting. Uh, these are things that I didn't allude to except in passing because you got to cut them some slack um, these days. You do, the last thing you want to do, and we always said this even in the good old days, restaurant critics never want to put restaurants out of business. Um, Mimi Sheridan, who was the worst of them, used to say, oh, they put themselves out of business by being lousy. Well, that's not entirely true, but she was a person who used to review for the New York Times decades ago, who admitted to having a true mean streak, which even her editor said, you know, if you want to slap these people, you have to you know, do it with your ring on. I mean, he says, well, that's the way I feel. You know, I'm a, I'm a consumer reporter. Well, a restaurant critic is only barely a consumer reporter. On the other hand, we're not supposed to be so Pollyanna as to praise everything that uh, we see and eat just to be nice guys. But there are and have been some in the past <clears throat> which earn the enmity of restaurateurs, um, uh, not without reason, because some of these people, some of these reviewers, critics went in there in order to establish their own uh, persona and to get people to read them, their editors would even encourage them to be rough, tough. Um, Vanity Fair magazine once sent a uh, restaurant critic across the English Channel from London to eat at um, a place in Paris, which was much ballyhooed, and was told, go slash it to ribbons, which he did. Um, this is a great, great rarity. But, I mean, there have been instances when editors-in-chief who couldn't get a great table at a restaurant in a restaurant in New York <clears throat> would tell their food writer, go and tear the place to ribbons. <clears throat> so those days are clearly and, 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 and rightly over. Uh, the British critics, uh, by the way, London critics, have a long reputation for going to a restaurant with one guest eating the lamb chops and the fish. The fish was a little overcooked, which he then reports as overcooked, which means the fish, every fish out of the kitchen is always going to be overcooked. You should never order the fish. Um, and comment, because they don't have much to write about the food, they say, oh, well, this is a, a ladies who lunch place. Oh, this is a place where uh, Euro trash go. Oh, this is a place where you're going to find men in, in uh, 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 <clears throat> uh, pinstripe suits and so forth. Um, that's that's a little part of what you should be reporting on, uh, not the whole. You know, it's kind of interesting, uh, John, in the years that we've been uh, uh, talking uh, with you and, and you give us reviews of restaurants. I think one of the most valuable things that you provide is context. You're going there to enjoy a meal and often with friends. You're not just going as a as a, a, a paid reviewer for uh, some uh, organization. So you're there and you're talking about it in context. And today, more than ever, uh, what I find very valuable about your, your, your opinions and people like yourself is that restaurants that used to be four star or what, whatever high ranking they had someplace may not really be up to it, but still be a fine place to go have a meal. And you keep it in context. And also a lot of the newer places that were given birth or survived the pandemic sometimes are doing an amazing job far beyond their background. So uh, I, I, to answer uh, uh, John, uh, John's original question about are you more valuable now than ever? Well, if I'm going particularly to a strange uh, town that I haven't been before, haven't been in a while, uh, and I'm going to pay a, a lot of money for a very nice meal, I'd sure like to have somebody who could put it in context. Good point. And I think uh, that the worst thing you can do is to um, go to like TripAdvisor or Yahoo and look down the, uh, and they give out stars and stuff too, ridiculously. But these are 
these are common folks just like us, Vox Populi, you know. Well, when you read and this guy says, this is the worst meal I ever had and they gave me a lousy table, um, how do you know who that person is? Not that they're being paid off by another restaurateur to say these things or to be paid off by the restaurant to say wonderful things, but you just don't know. You also don't know if this person has any taste level at all, at all. Um, I go out with friends of mine all the time, and I don't really like garlic. Oh, I don't eat uh, shellfish. Oh, and um, so they're hardly in a position to judge the array of the menu, um, or some of them feel intimidated. I don't like fancy restaurants. Well, yeah. you know, yeah. I've got like fancy restaurants. I like holes in the wall. I like all kinds of, and I have to assess them uh, within that within that context, as you say. So yes, um, you need. You need me when you're going to Phoenix, Arizona, and you don't know the, the city. And the Phoenix, Arizona restaurant needs me because I'm the one who's telling Art, this is where you should go more than ever. Mm. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Well, thank you. I appreciate that perspective. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.